The Man Who Is Death is the first episode of Tales from the Crypt, directed by Walter Hill, written by Hill and Robert Renau, and shot by John R. Leonetti. It's based on a story from The Crypt of Terror number 17, the book that would become Tales from the Crypt. Of course, there are going to be many differences when adapting a seven-page comic book short story into a 26-minute TV episode. The premise for both the comic and the show are the same. A prison executioner is addicted to his work. He loves killing convicted murderers. His favorite method of execution? The electric chair. However, once put out of the job, he begins tracking down acquitted murderers and exacts his own shocking brand of justice. The differences between both versions begin with our main character. In the original comic, his name is Edgar Bowman, and he looks like Lex Luthor had his skin stretched too tight around his skeleton. Bowman is famous nationwide, often being invited to prisons in other states as their executioner of honor, operating their gas chambers and gallows, but electricity is still his favorite instrument of death. Bowman is all too eager to show his excitement for killing. In the TV show, our executioner's name is Niles Talbot, played by William Sadler of The Shawshank Redemption and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey fame, as well as the eventual star of Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. Sadler's portrayal of the character believes electricity is the only way to kill a human. His dialogue even takes a jab at the other methods shown in the comic. Let's say do it with gas or with some lethal injection. I don't take to that. That's how you kill a dog or a cat or something, not a man. It's gotta be the old electric chair for me. He too loves seeing death row inmates get what's coming to them, but is way more quiet and reserved, savoring the moment. Most executioners never look the prisoners in the eye, afraid they're gonna get spooked or something. Not me. I always look. On the page, Bowman is constantly talking to himself. He's the type of expository 1950s villain we all know and love, and third-person narration panels guide the plot along. When adapting the story for the screen, Walter Hill writes Talbot as a fourth wall breaker. Much of Sadler's screen time is used having him address the audience, bringing us all into his world. The kickoff for both plots is our executioner losing his job. In the show, the death penalty is repealed, putting an end to Talbot's position as executioner. He asks for another job at the prison, but the warden declines. Well, we thought it wouldn't be good to have you around the prisoners. I mean, they all knew what you did. I mean, they all knew you were the man who could get pretty ugly. Listen, it's nothing I can't handle. In the comic, there simply isn't anybody left on death row for Bowman to execute. Nobody is murdering anybody. The town is just full of law-abiding citizens. With no more inmates to put down, both Bowman and Talbot take justice into their own hands and look to the courts for their supply. In the comic, innocent people are put on trial for murder and are all found not guilty, but the verdict doesn't matter to Bowman. In his eyes, everybody is guilty. The man is insane and there is a clear line between good and bad in the story. The show blurs this line by having Talbot go after murderers who are guilty, but were set free due to technicalities or lack of evidence. Bowman and Talbot both electrocute their victims using metal fences, hot tubs, showers, and power lines. But this is Tales from the Crypt, and the fun can't last for our main character. In the comic, the police piece together that the former executioner is targeting once alleged murderers. Bowman even spots an undercover detective trailing his prey, a woman named Betty Bates. Bowman lays low for a couple weeks until the night he goes after Bates, remaining in the shadows. Just as he tries to grab her, there's a flash of lightning, giving his presence away to the cops. Months later, Bowman, now a death row inmate, is being escorted to the electric chair, screaming that he's afraid and doesn't want to die. In the show, Walter Hill's writing and direction keeps our eyes and ears on Talbot at all times. We never know if the police are piecing together if anyone is behind these electrifying deaths. Talbot thinks he's untouchable, and his next victim is a go-go dancer. He rigs her cage to electrocute her to death at the flip of a switch, but when nothing happens, the cops come bursting in. Talbot is under arrest, and lucky for him, 
the death penalty is back. You'll be glad to know the state legislature has just reinstated the death penalty. And guess who's not pulling the switch this time? Yeah! <laughs> One addition to the HBO episode that I love is a subplot of the governor calling, or not calling, I should say. The comic and the show both begin with a hysterical death row inmate being escorted to the electric chair, begging for their lives. But the show also has the inmates screaming that the governor will call and pardon them. Well, I've been here 12 years and the governor ain't called yet. Now that he's the one being dragged to the electric chair, he's begging for them to wait to throw the switch. He knows the governor is going to pardon him. And what a shocker, the governor doesn't call. I'm telling you, he's gonna call. I really like both the comic and TV episode of The Man Who Is Death. The Crypt of Terror comic is definitely a much campier experience and is very much a part of the morality story formula that EC Comics is famous for. Walter Hill's vision is darker and has a twisted sense of humor, setting the stage perfectly for the seven seasons of Tales from the Crypt to come. I didn't want no haircut. They said that was a mistake because my head might catch on fire from the electricity when they juice me. I told them don't worry, the governor gonna call. Nearly the entire television series is based on stories from the original EC comics. With 30 plus years separating the comics from the show, it's going to be interesting to explore the differences both mediums have to bring to their own execution. Uh -huh.